Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Blue Monday, how I hear Blue Monday. Got to work. Black we got two big stories Monday. today on The Savage Nation. The fake black has quit as the head of the NAACP in Spokane because she failed black. Just as we had a fake man pretending to be a woman and the media literally gushed all over him, here we had a woman who was born white, lied when she signed up for the job at NAACP. I I don't know how she got the job, but uh, she faked being black, and she pushed the black liberation movement, the fake social justice movement, all the communist garbage that you've been putting up with from this organization and those like it, have come from fakers like her who are doing it for personal gain. You heard me. They're using race as a weapon against America. And frankly, you have to stand up and speak out about it. Rachel Dolezal quits as head of the NACP in Spokane. And she says, it's not about me. She faked being black. She changed her appearance to appear more ethnic. She lied about her race for years. She was outed by her parents. Her estranged parents came forward saying she has routinely ID'd as a black woman when she's biologically white. So what is this about race and ethnicity? And there's a bigger question here. Is it time for the NAACP to move on? We have a black president. We have a black attorney general. We have blacks running uh, middle-level government in the United States of America. What is the purpose of the NAACP? That's the real question here. And there's another question. What a racket. Wait until I read to you her resignation letter. You'll see what these leftists really are. A revolutionary using race as a weapon against the middle class in America. Another big topic is the liberal psychotics who ride around with Stop Monsanto on their bumpers with little bumper stickers. They don't even know what Monsanto does. These are the little lily white whites driving around fearing everything they eat, breathe, and drink. And they're convinced that GMOs are killing them. Well, let me tell you something. Nature has been doing GMOing from the beginning of evolution. Man has been hybridizing plants and animals from the day animal husbandry began and plant husbandry began. Have you idiots no idea how your food has been derived, where your food is derived from? I'm gonna prove to you beyond doubt that GMOs are very safe and it's the left that's trying to destroy our food supply who have you believing otherwise. So we have two major topics. And the first topic is the fake black quitting the NAACP. You probably saw the story. She's at the Spokane, Washington chapter. Her parents came forward and said she's lied. She's been white since birth. And she gave a resignation letter. And when I read you the resignation letter, you'll understand what a faker this woman is. And I want to know why she hasn't been arrested by federal and the state authorities for identity theft, false applications, and whatever else applies. Let me explain something to you. If you applied for a job and lied about your background, you'd probably not only be fired, you might be arrested. Why is she not being arrested? Why is the NAACP silent on this issue? Well, these are some of the questions that need answering. Now, before we go into these questions, the phone number here is 855-400-7282, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. I want to begin the show as you're calling that number with something beautiful. And don't play it yet. But Friday night, I was driving to a restaurant. I heard a song from Colombia, Las Los Caminos de la Vida, a Spanish song. And the lyrics really struck me as amazing. I want you to listen to this for one minute, and I'll tell you why. See, it's got a little of the Indian in it, because it's from South America. Some of the rhythmics are Indian. And the song is a heartbreaker, if you actually know the lyrics. And the reason I'm playing Los Caminos de la Vida, it's about a man, and the song is called uh, The Paths of Life, Los Caminos de la Vida. And it's about a man who remembers what life was like when he was a boy. And he said, I used to think that life was different when I was a little boy. I used to think that things were easy, like yesterday. And it's all about his single mother who is dying and sick. And it's, it's so touching, it's unbelievable. And the reason it touched me is because so many millions of single mothers out there 
have killed themselves, worn themselves down to the bone to raise their children right. And I think this song speaks to all of those single mothers. The paths of life, Los Caminos de la Vida. And you don't want to hear something funny. When I went in the restaurant, I went in singing the song, Los Caminos de la Vida. And there's a couple of guys, two from Mexico, one from Guatemala. And the minute I saw them, they say, hey, Michael, I said, Los Caminos de la Vida. Immediately, they broke into the first stanza with me, put our arms around each other, and we sang. They were thrilled to know that I knew this song. It touched them, and it touched me. And what I'm trying to say to you is that America, when it was a melting pot, benefited from the immigrants who came here. And virtually every immigrant group that comes here brings something new to the melting pot that is a benefit to the social order as a whole. Do I have to tell you about what the Irish brought, what the Italians brought, what the Jews brought, what the Germans brought? Virtually every group brings something positive that becomes part of the larger culture, which is what made America great. But now Obama is flooding America with too many immigrants who not only do not bring anything positive to this culture, but they hate this culture. They hate the society. They hate the flag. They hate the language. They hate everything that we stand for. And it's all a conscious attempt to turn us into a third world cesspool. And that's why I celebrate a Spanish song to show you how beautiful multiculturalism should be. This song underlines the hardships of growing up as I said to you, in a single-parent family living in poverty. And it's a reality that millions of people in America still experience, by the way, and around the world, probably tens of millions. And the song is dedicated to all the mothers in the world. And it's about the, the singer addressing and touching different people. He didn't understand how hard life was till he became a man. How many of us look at life differently that we become men, and part of us is still a boy and not understanding why we're not happy? It's because we won't become men and look at the world through a man's eyes. In other words, we don't want to see the world as men. We want to see the world as boys. And we keep screaming about this and screaming about that. Well, the world isn't a perfect place. And just remember how hard it is for people other than yourself. Okay, so you paid a little more for your jet fuel this week. So you had to put a little more money into the drywall in the mansion you're building. Oh, you had to pay an extra a few dollars in taxes. Well, that's not what the song is about. No, the paths of life are not what I used to hope, are not what I used to believe, are not what I used to imagine. The paths of life are very hard to travel, they're hard to walk, and I can't find the way out. It's a very existentially interesting song. And the reason I'm playing it for you again is to emphasize the beauty, the beauty of multiculturalism when you have a culture that comes here and offers something rather than how to blow buildings up and blow up children at a soccer game. Why are we bringing them in here when they hate us? Why are we bringing in so many throwbacks from a religion that is guaranteed to bring hatred to the country. There's only one answer. Now I want to talk about Rachel Dolezal quitting as head of the Spokane NAACP. I'm going to read you her resignation letter. I am also going to talk about the safety of GMOs and how nuts and throwbacks like Neil Young, the rock musician who should be in a rocking chair in an old age home, is now about to release a 36th studio album called The Monsanto Years. And the album features the collaboration of Neil Young and Willie Nelson's sons, Micah and Lucas. And it targets Monsanto, the company known for producing food made from genetically modified organisms, or GMOs. And the song is so vile in its hatred and stupidity that only a rock musician who spent his life smoking dope and talking to other dopey rock musicians and actors could actually believe the, the rubbish the rubbish that he's singing. Let me explain something to you. GMOs can save millions of lives. It's the environmentalists who are doing real harm to the world. And the best example of this is golden rice. Does anyone out there know what golden rice is? It's a GMO-created rice. It's enhanced with vitamin A producing beta carotene. I happen to know that one of the biggest problems in the third world was blindness in children. And do you know why they were going blind? Because it was from vitamin A deficiency. Even to this day, a half a million people, mainly children, will die from vitamin A deficiency. And a half a million people, mostly children, uh, excuse me, 500,000 people, mostly children, will lose their sight. And about 6,000 of them will die from vitamin A deficiency. And that is why 
companies spent a fortune hybridizing rice in this case in order to make certain that the rice was rich in vitamin A, in this case, beta carotene. It was to stop the blindness. It was to cure blindness. And so these idiots, these morons, are singing about GMOs. I see idiots in Marin County, California, driving around with Stop Monsanto, lily white morons who are afraid of everything in the world. They're afraid of black people, brown people. They're afraid of Asian people. They're afraid of uh, UFOs. They're afraid of uh, fluoride. They're afraid of uh, brain waves in the air. They're afraid of pesticides. They're afraid of GMOs. Little chickens running around. Afraid of the whole world. Let me explain to you how corn was developed. Do you know how corn was developed? Well, it was developed by the evil Native Americans and Central Americans over a long period of time. Corn was originally a grass. A grass with a very small group of uh, flowers on the top, or seeds rather, and they started to hybridize it by picking the grasses with the larger seeds and cross-pollinating them or cross-matching them with other grasses with large seeds. Over and over and over and through millennia, they became corn. Do you understand that? Corn didn't just happen by itself. It, would, it was hybridized by Indian farmers until it became corn. Should we now have a bumper sticker that says, what, disinter them from their graves? And try them in the, in the United Nations for making corn. Do you understand that the cherry that you eat, do you understand that the pear that you eat, do you understand that the wheat that you eat, do you understand that virtually everything that you eat has been genetically modified, if not by nature, then by man, and it is not toxic. This is a scare tactic of the radical left who are afraid of everything. Everything scares them. And was it not for this uh, wheat, the golden rice, the miracle grain, enhanced with vitamin A, a half a million more children a year would die from blindness because of vitamin A deficiency. And many of those lives could be saved if golden rice were in their diets. But the ongoing hatred of anti-GMO hippie activist groups and their lavish scare campaign with a global war chest estimated to exceed $500 million a year have kept golden rice off the global market. Do you understand that this is the same scare tactic that's being used with the fake global warming data? Do you understand how dangerous the left is to the survival of the human race? This is the Savage Nation. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. There are two topics, and you're only calling on one of them, which is fine. I mean, the callers determine what interests them. I talked about the fake black quitting as head of the NAACP in Spokane, and that's a huge story, and you've got to read her resignation letter to see what a devout revolutionary she really is and how she really was using race as a weapon against the middle class, as, does, as do most civil rights organizations. They use their race as a weapon against innocent people, in my estimation. And when I read the resignation letter, you'll see what's behind most of this, by the way. The big story for most of you, though, is the, uh, uh, the issue of GMOs. Many of you are freak, freaked out over GMOs. You don't even know what they are. You have no background whatsoever in science, and yet you're panicked into thinking that GMOs are unsafe. What you don't know is that the supporters and partners who are involved in the $500 million a year uh, PR campaign against GMOs reads like a directory of European church and government sponsored social justice and development groups. The very same groups who are promoting the global warming lie are promoting the lie about GMOs. And I will prove it to you. Patrick Moore, one of the founders of Greenpeace in the 1970s, a bona fide true environmentalist, quit Greenpeace and now works to expose Greenpeace's actions in the developing world. And he has joined with golden rice inventor Ingo Potricus in calling for putting Greenpeace on trial for crimes against humanity. Did you hear me? There are other humanitarian environmental groups that have come to recognize the important role biotech can play in alleviating human suffering and spurring development. 
Two of them are Oxfam and Nature Conservancy. They were initially opposed to GMOs, but in the light of overwhelming scientific confirmation of safety and efficacy, both Oxfam and Nature Conservancy have softened or ended their opposition to GMOs. Isn't it time that you open your mind to the realities that GMOs are not only not unsafe, they would be of benefit to so many millions of children who are dying of blindness? Where are you getting this information from that GMOs are unsafe? Many of you live in a panic about everything you put in your mouth. Let's go to the callers, 855 400 7282 when I come back. Many of you are diehard fanatical environmentalists. Unfortunately, you're not making any scientific sense. What you're doing is espousing hysteria. You're espousing the hysteria of the leftists who claim that global warming will soon flood the earth because of melting ice caps. Don't be a don't be a naive fool here. Look into the evidence before you jump to the false conclusion. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Well, the call board is flooded with people uh, who disagree with me on GMOs, which will make for a very robust conversation, which is good. Because I allege that GMOs can save millions of lives, and it's the environmentalists who are doing real harm to the world's poor. And the best example is golden rice, a miracle grain that uh, is enhanced with vitamin A-producing beta-carotene. It was developed 15 years ago, and it could be saving a half a million children a year from blindness in the third world. But that doesn't stop the leftists in the environmental movement from putting out, I think, false information on the dangers of GMOs. They seem to be afraid of everything that man creates. Everything is a Frankenstein to them. And we can argue about it if you'd like. Let's begin with Luke on WABC. Luke, line three, go ahead, please. Hi, I'd like to talk about the glyphosate. Um, that's really the main issue. It's not necessarily GMO. But the big issue is that we've got too many pesticides in our plants and it's killing off everything around us. That okay, let's start with the basics. Do you know what a glycosate is? Uh, not necessarily, but what I... What I All right, but you know it's bad. Another typical leftist uh, incomplete information. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're a good person, but you're ignorant. You don't even know what a glycosate is, but it's already Frankenstein. But from my understanding from listening to Alex Jones shows that the glyphosate's also getting in our... Well, fine. well, maybe Alex Jones ought to get a basic education in chemistry. What is a glycosate? Sorry, say that again? What is a glycosate? You're alleging that it's dangerous. What is a glycosate? Glyphosate is a pesticide that basically makes plants unable to generate uh, sugars by blocking the photosynthesis process in the plant. Okay, when a glycosate breaks down, what does a glycosate break down into? It's just determined by the United Nations to be toxic. And no, 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 I don't care about the United Nations. It's a full of leftist fools who are trying to control our economy and everyone else's economy, uh, just as they're doing with global warming. Are you a believer in the global warming lie as well? I thought we were talking about GMOs. Here. No, no, let me ask you where you're coming from. Are you believing in global warming as, as science? Uh, look, if you want to talk about GMOs, let's talk about GMOs. No, 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 you're going to, sir, I need to know just where you're sitting. Do you believe that the evidence is in amongst all the world scientists that global warming is going to destroy the earth? Look, you're putting words in my mouth. I well, I'm asking you to answer the question. Let's make it simpler for you. How about carbon dioxide? Do you believe carbon dioxide is causing a meltdown of the glaciers? No, I don't. Well, but you're a supporter of the global warming hypothesis, aren't you? No, we're not. What do you mean, no, we're not? You are, who's we're? Me, me and, and the people I affiliate with do not believe in global warming, but we do believe there's a pollution problem, and we also... Oh, what do you mean the people you affiliate with? I'd like to know what that organization is. Maybe I should know who they are. <laughs> me and my friends. We don't believe in global warming. You and your friends don't believe, but you have. do you have any science background? I mean, I'm trying to help you here. No, but I do have a background in permaculture, which is sustainable agriculture, agricultural sustainable living. Okay, I'm, I'm not knocking that. But I think that you're wrong here, because in order to discuss glycosates in any intelligent manner, you have to know what a glycosate is. 
I understand, and I apologize for my lack no, of... You no, know, you know, we're two intelligent men. But I think sometimes just using a word scares people. And let's put it in a generic term, and you'll do more research on your own. If GMOs were so bad, why would Patrick Moore, one of the original founders of Greenpeace, have broken with Greenpeace and is now working to expose Greenpeace's actions in the developing world? Why has he joined with Golden Rice inventor Ingo Patrikas in calling for putting Greenpeace on trial for crimes against humanity? It's not that he's a faker. Maybe he's come to understand that some of these groups are not well-intentioned. Uh, I understand that, but you also say yourself follow the money. Yeah, yeah, you could do that on both sides. Do, do you know that the anti-GMO movement has a war chest at, estimated to exceed $500 million a year to have kept golden rice off the global market? Where'd, I, that, money, well, where'd that money come from? I don't know, but I, I personally am not a fan of the anti-GMO movement because they, they put too many things into one category, and then they make it seem as if everything that Monsanto is doing is... Uh, that, okay, so at least we're meeting ourselves, let's say, at a 70 percentile area here, which is at least you're open to information. If you look at what a glycosate is, and glycosates are being used as a pesticide, but they're not really that dangerous. They're unstable compounds. They're rapidly transformed into glycic, ulmic, and formic acids, or known as gl glyciates, ulmiates, and formiates, which then combine with oxygen in the blood and undergo combustion with the production of water and carbonic acid which are not dangerous so i don't understand why people have suddenly latched on to this idea that this pesticide is that deadly it may be less deadly than some of the organophosphorus pesticides that are being used i mean let's be clear i hate the use of organophosphorus pesticides i know that they're carcinogenic but the fact of the matter is had pesticides not be used we'd have massive starvation around the globe do you know that Yes, but in, in a let me make another point about pesticides, which I have worked against my whole life. I try to avoid them in my own family's life. But I will tell you this, uh, because of the anti-pesticide movement in the 1960s and 70s, uh, DDT was uh, not used to spray swamps. You know that malaria had been largely eradicated around the world before that, right? This is well known, right? Yes, yes. And what, and what happened when DDT was banned? because of the hysteria about DDT. The Anopheles mosquito proliferated, and malaria saw a resurgence. We saw a resurgence of malaria around the world, and malaria became an epidemic again. So there are unintended consequences of wanting to do good, and the bigger picture may require the limited use of DDT and may require the limited use of glycosates, is what I'm saying. It's not an either-or. It's not a zero-sum game here. I, I understand that, but you need, you need to look into permaculture because permaculture has ways that you can actually prevent pests from you know eating all the plants up that's that's wonderful it's beautiful i'm totally into organic gardening but on a massive scale for the world's billions of people we we're not there yet the average poor person cannot afford organic food the average poor person in, in the world is starving to death they really don't care if gmos were used and they really don't know whether they're going to sleep with an empty belly because of it or not. So we have to look at starvation, not look at it from our elitist white point of view that we can afford organic food and everyone should be forced to eat it. Thank you for the call. 855-47282. I don't think I've changed any minds here, but I'm trying to open up a dialogue. There's a lot of hysteria out there. And it, it's all stemming from the hysteria about GMOs. And I saw an article over the weekend in the New York Post entitled How Neil Young and Greenpeace Work to Starve the World's Poor by Owen Patterson. And Owen Patterson is a member of the British Parliament, and he believes that Neil Young is doing more harm to the poor than Monsanto. And he's writing a song about fascism and chemical giants walking arm in arm. I mean, the aging hippie songwriter is following the lead of activists who claim that GMOs are harmful to health, farmers, and the environment. I totally agree with the writer. It's tragically wrong. And I believe that in reality, GMOs can save millions of lives. And it's the environmental wackos who are doing real harm to the world, which is not to say that I don't seek out organic fruits and vegetables where possible, but I'm not a poor man. I can afford them, which is not to say that I wouldn't prefer to eat uh, range fed beef, the little beef that I eat. Although now lately, as I get older, I, I don't know, I can't even look at a cow anymore without feeling sad for the cow, to be frank. 
I'm reaching a point where all life seems to be rather sacred to me. And so therefore, that's not it's not a, a cosmic statement that I'm making. It's a very personal statement. But the fact of the matter is the world's population, the world population is not at the point where we can afford to feed everybody with organic uh, uh, produce or organic, uh, organically raised meat. It's something that you'd get in Whole Foods for the very touchy feely uh, white people who have nothing but money to spend on their perfect little selves. Positive that if they eat organically, they're going to think organically. And if they think organically, the world will be a better place. All racism, sexism, homophobia will go away if only they think correctly. Okay, that's very nice, but it's naive. And again, uh, I know that many of you will argue with me about splicing foods together, not being the same as hybridizing plants, but let's go back to how nature has produced many of the fruits and vegetables that we eat. It was through natural selection, by the way, that some of these fruits and vegetables originated. But it was also by man's manipulation of these vegetables, as I try to show you, that we wound up with amazing product, uh, produce such as corn. I was amazed when I was in college to learn that corn originally was found in Central America eons ago as a grass. I'm going to repeat it again. A grass with very small seeds up on the top. And the Indian farmers hybridized the, the grasses. And those with the larger grass seeds were, were, were um, uh, hybridized with other grasses with large grass seeds. They were selected by man, not by nature. And eventually they kept making larger and larger grains in the grass. And we wound up eventually with corn. That's how the Native Americans gave us corn and gave the world one of the, I think, six of the grass staple foods on earth. Also in the 1960s, there was a great movie. I'll never forget it. It was called The Death of Grass. Does anyone remember that movie? It was shocking. And it shows uh, uh, Englishmen eating and drinking in a bar, and they're eating their, their kidney pies, and they're eating bread, and that shows people around the world eating their rice and wheat and rice products, everything made from grasses. And then the, uh, uh, the theme of the plot is that a virus comes along that attacks only grasses. And when I say grasses, I don't mean your lawn. Six of the world's most, uh, six of the crops upon which the world relies for staple foods, rice, corn, wheat, rye, barley and one other which i can't remember right now i didn't pre prep any of this there's no notes i have no notes in front of me i'm going strictly on memory so five or six of the world's principal crops upon which most of the world lives are members of the graminae or grass family and so this film uh, was based upon the theory that if a virus came along that attacked only grasses it would wipe out the world's primary food supplies and then there was mass starvation and then there was all sorts of revolution and murder, and it showed the people shooting each other for food. It was quite an alarming scenario, and it led me to you know look into the Graminae and the Grass family and all of that. It's all very interesting. And so let's come back now to GMOs. GMOs are not the Frankensteins that they have been made out to be, and I do understand where this came from. It's a, it's a kind of mass hysteria. That's my opinion. Let's take some of the calls right now because men, I think all of the callers are disagreeing with me. Are there any callers who agree with me? I don't think so. Are there any scientists who agree with me? That's what I really like rather than just callers. They're not bad people, but they've been misinformed, I think. It's part of the scare campaigns. WJR, Matt, you're a disagreeer on line eight. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I uh, disagree with the uh, comparison of GMOs with hybrids. You mentioned that in your last segment a little bit. It's uh, it's an unfair advantage, uh, comparison because hybridization is something that can be done by man in nature. Uh, it's no different than selective breeding of livestock. But what Monsanto is doing, so these plants are glyphosate resistant, is something that has to be done in a lab. I would like to mention also I'm a fourth-generation farmer. And I'm very conservative, and I reject global warming. Um, but this uh, GMO thing is something that needs to be taken look uh, seriously looked at. You also need to take a look at the revolving door between the USDA and the, the board on Monsanto and follow the money, as someone else had said earlier. 
there's a lot of stuff going on here that needs well, well, but but I think you're mixing up several subjects at once. You still haven't made a convincing case that GMOs are necessarily harmful to human beings. Where is the proof that it isn't harmful? That's what I'd like to see. Well, but why, why eliminate golden rice, which could wipe out blindness in the third world on a theory uh, that GMOs are dangerous? Don't you think that's the tragic mistake? Uh, tra that would be a tragic mistake to err on that side. I have I have no knowledge of golden rice. I, it's, I've never heard of it before. To be honest with you. Um, All right, well, that's fair enough. But golden rice is a miracle grain that was developed 15 years ago, and it's enhanced. It's a grain enhanced with vitamin A producing beta carotene. And 500,000 children a year lose their sight because of vitamin A deficiency. I've known that ever since I worked in the third world. And I used to wonder why can't we just give them vitamin A? It would be a miracle. Well, this man, this I think he's a Russian scientist, Ingo Potrikas. I don't know what his ethnicity is, nor does it matter. But doesn't it tell you something that Patrick Moore, one of the founders of Greenpeace in the 1970s, would quit Greenpeace and work with the, with the man uh, who invented golden rice and calling for putting Greenpeace on trial for crimes against humanity? Doesn't that tell us something? It tells you something about that particular grain, but I, I believe that uh, the, uh, you know, what they're trying to accomplish here with the golden rice is, is something that's, you know, very, very good and beneficial. Now, what they're accomplishing with you know, the, the glyphosate resistant stuff, to me, from my perspective, it's questionable. To me, it's nothing more, more than. All right, I would say questionable is a fair statement, but I would say we have people starving to death and going blind, and we don't have the time to sit in our laboratories and wonder about whether we should let them go blind or not. And I would say we have to stop listening to these activist polemicists. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You want, it, want me to tell you how to get along with construction workers who you don't know? You want to make someone smile and turn them into your friend? Someone who speaks Spanish? When you walk by, you ever see a strange guy, you look at him and he looks at you, you don't know what to say to each other, especially if they're from another country. Just look at the guy and say, Los Caminos de la Vida. I can guarantee you, you'll make a friend. You don't need to know anymore because he knows what the paths of life are all about. He's walking on that path of life and he's breaking his back here in America trying to make a buck. Don't ever forget that. Oh, yeah, illegal aliens and all that. We know the problem. We know the problem, but we're not talking about the hardworking guys, are we? We're talking about the folks who are here doing nothing but sucking the system dry and the one-third of all prisoners who should be deported. We're not talking about the guys breaking their back on the construction site. So go up to him and say, Los Caminos de la Vida. He'll know what you mean. That's all you got to say. It's like a universal statement. We'll talk about GMOs. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Blue Monday, how oh, I hear Blue Monday. Got to work, flag or sleeve all deep. La vida, it's so beautiful. You know, there's a word in Spanish called Duende that I learned 40 years ago because I grew up listening to Spanish music. I know you've got me typecast, but I grew up on Cuban, Puerto Rican, uh, Panamanian music in New York. And the thing is, I learned Spanish in school for seven years. And I, came, I read Spanish literature. I had to read all the Spanish literature. I never really adapted that well to it. I like French and French language better. But <clears throat> in the Spanish language, there is a word called Duende, which is loosely translated as meaning soul. And some songs 
have that magic called soul. Some music has it, some art has it, you know, some poetry has it, some talk show hosts have it, and some don't. You can't buy Duende, you can't learn Duende. And this song has Duende, and when I heard it on the radio Friday night driving to a restaurant, I'm going to get back to GMOs and the, the fake black at the NAACP, believe me. But this is an important st story for me. Because it's a universal story about a, a single mother who is dying and her hardworking son, you know, looks at her and his heart's ripped out. Because when he was a boy, he thought life was easy and different. And he, he looked at his mother, you know, and he just can't believe how hard life is. It's such a beautiful song. And what I'm saying to you is we can't let our desire to save America... And we can't let our desire to maintain borders, language, and culture poison us to all of the positive things that are brought in by some immigrants and some immigrant groups. We can't let that happen. We can't let the fanatical Muslims make us hate everyone else. I'll, I won't mince words. Let's make it real simple for you. Every time there's another arrest by the, by the FBI, it doesn't seem to be someone from Mexico, by the way, even though 30% of all criminals include many Mexicans. Don't say all Mexicans come here to rip the system off. It's just not true. And that's the poison that's going around. I'm trying to end the poison. I'm trying to make you understand you can have it. Yeah, you can have it both ways. Yes, you can have it both ways. If only you will use some, what shall I say, discernment? That's the word I'm looking for, discernment. And that's why I'm playing the song, because the song touched me all over again. I've never heard the song. This, the version I played for you is by La Tropa. Velanata, I don't know, there's many versions of Los Caminos de la Vida, the road of life, the path of life, the paths of life, really. And it's about the paths of life are not what I used to hope, they're not what I used to believe, they're not what I used to imagine, they're hard to travel, they're hard to walk, and I can't find a way out. It's almost existential. It's amazing, the, the lyrics of it. But the last point of this is, the, the, the singer says, Yo pensaba que la vida era distinta, pardon my pronunciation, I used to think that life was different cuando era chiquiti when I was a little boy. To yo cria, I used to believe that things were easy. Like yesterday, that my married mother, you know. It's amazing, the song. And, and, and look, what the, look what the culture has brought here in so many positive ways. And you can't, again, stereotype and categorize an entire culture or race in a negative way just because we're being flooded with so many haters from another culture and another religion. Period. End of story. Not all cultures are the same. Some bring things and some don't. Look at the Italian people. I mean, if you want to get focused on the Italian people, you say, oh, mafia. Well, that is so embarrassing to Italian people. What percentage of the Italian people were ever members of the mafia? A very tiny, tiny percentage. Tiny, tiny percentage. And look what the Italian culture has brought to society whether it be, forget the commonplace, common man says Italian food. What about opera, Italian opera, and the music of Italy, and such? And that's why people were offended by the series The Sopranos, which, which implied that everyone was in the mafia. So you have to look at the positive of cultures. Virtually every part of our melting pot has brought something positive to the society until rather recently, when Obama has chosen to flood Americans, America with immigrants who have nothing to give us and everything to take. You get it? So don't fall for it. Don't let the left turn you against all immigrants because what they're trying to do is turn you into the image of a racist, which brings us to the second topic, which I never got to, which I think is very important, which is the issue of the fake uh, black person at the uh, NAACP in Spokane. This is an amazing story, an amazing story that a woman could get away with this for so many years. And finally, she quits today discovered she lied about her race for years, including changing her appearance to appear more ethnic. Her parents came forward saying she has routinely identified herself as a black woman when she is biologically white. And so this incident has sparked a national dialogue over race and ethnicity and self-identity. And I've got to read for you her resignation letter, which is such a crock of garbage. But it really brings to question the whole issue of uh, racial politics, using race as a weapon, the Black Caucus, the NAACP. Isn't it time for them to consider moving on? After all, don't we have a black president? 
Don't we have a black attorney general two in a row now? Don't many members of our government, uh, aren't they folks of African-American heritage? Why keep pushing this revolutionary rhetoric about racial and social justice, police brutality, pro-justice political representation, empowering marginalized voices? Why keep pushing it? Why? Because the white people are pushovers. Because basically the white people are nice people. They're polite people. They're good people. And they're busy making a living and making society a better place for themselves and their family. In order to engage in this, they don't have the time. But there are million, excuse me, there are probably thousands of Rachel Dolezals out there who are not faking their race, but faking their rhetoric. Al Sharpton is a classic race hustler. Jesse Jackson has made a fortune as a race hustler his whole life, in my opinion. They're not alone, though. There's an entire industry of race hustlers out there who keep pushing the big lie, even though we have a black president, a black attorney general, etc. And so you have to look at this. It's a very big story. And if you read her resignation letter, your hair will stand up. I have it on michaelsavage.com. It's just amazing how she concludes. She says, the movement is larger than a movement in time or a single person's story. She said, I hope that everyone offers their robust support of the Journey for Justice campaign that the NAACP launches today. It is with complete allegiance to the cause of racial and social justice and the NAACP that I step aside from the presidency and pass the baton to my vice president, Naima Quarles Burnley. And she goes on to say, I will never stop fighting for human rights. And she says it's about justice. She says, this is not me quitting. This is a continuum. Big word, isn't it? It's about moving the cause of human rights and the black liberation movement. Oh, really? The black liberation movement? Does anyone know what that is? Do you know what the black liberation movement is? Along the continuum, continuum from resistance to chattel slavery, to abolition of, to defiance of Jim Crow, again, Jim Crow again, to the building of Black Wall Street, here we go, to the civil rights and black power movement, to the hashtag Black Lives Matter movement, remember where that one came from? And into a future of self-determination empowerment. With much love and a commitment to always fight for what is right and good in this world, Rachel Dolezal, I'd like to know why the FBI has not arrested her and charged her with several crimes because she has committed several crimes, by the way. Several crimes, indeed. Now, what I'm about to play for you will have you not... On one hand, you're going to laugh. On the other hand, you're going to realize that MSNBC is perhaps the most dangerous political organization in the United States of America. It is a mouthpiece for all of these revolutionary organizations. It is a mouthpiece for Obama, a mouthpiece for Sharpton. He's, out, he's on it, by the way. And why Microsoft would be affiliated with such a vile organization as MSNBC is really not uh, questionable at all. You see, if Microsoft paid its fair share of taxes, I would trust anything that Bill Gates says. If Microsoft paid its fair share of taxes and didn't use every trick known to mankind to avoid paying its fair share of taxes, maybe I wouldn't understand why they, they fund MSNBC. It's to make sure that you are thrown off base every day with arguments about race, homosexuality, and such, and you don't pay attention to the fact that uh, they and other major corporations are, do are dodging taxes through the Irish and other uh, uh, games that they play. I only hope that the European Union finally gets Google on their tax dodge in Ireland. If you ever saw what Google earns in Europe and what they actually pay in taxes, you would understand why the European tax collectors are on to them. And the same is true, by the way, for many other corporations who fund uh, some of these social justice organizations, which are made for one reason only, which are funded for one reason only, which is to continue to pressure us into thinking about black rights, Hispanic rights, Asian rights, let's see, gay rights, uh, animal rights, everything except the tax dodge that they're funding these organizations to uh, focus us on something else. So let me play for you a host on the show on MSNBC. I never heard of her. You're not going to believe this in clip 10. But is it possible 
that she might actually be black. And I, the, the best way that I know how to describe this, and I want to be very careful here, because I don't want to say that it is equivalent to the transgender experience, but there is a useful language in trans and cis, which is just to say some of us are born cisgendered, some of us are born transgendered, but that there, that there is actually a different category of blackness that is about the achievement of blackness despite one's parentage. Is that can you possible? Believe this, can you believe the mouth on this woman? Do you know what an insult that is to an African-American person to say they are, they are the equivalent of a transgendered person and that you don't actually have to be of African heritage to consider yourself African-American because you feel black, you are black? Do you have any idea how sick this is? Do you have any idea what this is, really? I'm not going to get that excited over it. I know what this is. This is the communist left redefining everything in our society in front of our eyes. Now, the host then goes on to the next idiot in clip 11. It's absolutely possible. I mean, there, that, that, wh why that, that. not? I mean, I think that one thing oh that she God. said that I found so fascinating was she said her identity is multi-layered and that her identity is very complicated and that she didn't expect for people to understand it easily. Now, why would Bill Gates be associated with such sick people as this, such low IQ people? such race baiters as this, why would Microsoft fund M NBC? I could see why Pill Griffin is still there. I could see why Pill Griffin still works at MSNBC and NBC. That's where he belongs. He belongs with these low IQ uh, insulting people. But it gets even worse in the next clip 12. Listen to this from MSNBC. Bill Gates, pay attention. I think what she's alluding to is this sort of perhaps and again we don't know that much about the story you know we need to hear more from her and more of her uh -huh, of her uh -huh. personal story uh -huh, uh -huh, but uh -huh. but there there certainly is a chance that 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 she identifies as a black woman and that that that, that there could be authenticity to that well her parents said she was born as a caucasian girl and she resigned today you idiots and if you had any self respect Harris Perry, you would be fired or you'd, be, you'd resign today out of shame. And your guest would never be allowed anywhere in the media again. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. All right, welcome back. We're talking about uh, GMOs, which I allege are safe, number one, especially in terms of saving countless uh, millions of people who are dying of blindness and starvation. They're not all uh, lily white people living in uh, Westchester or Marin County who can afford to buy, uh, uh, let's say, non GMO foods, organic produce. I buy it, I have the money. I'm an upper middle class white guy, I can afford it. But don't tell me about the starvation in Africa. What do you want, the people in Africa who are eating mud right now to wait for organic food rather than some miracle rice that could save them, you idiots? Wouldn't you rather feed them now and then worry about fixing the food later? What, what are you talking about? What world are you living in? And then there's the fake black woman, Rachel Dolezal, who quit as the head of the Spokane NAACP. I believe she committed a crime. And I believe that the FBI has an obligation to the American people to put an end to these to these uh, race crimes. This is a race crime. She used race as a weapon, in my opinion. And we have all paid the price for the weapon she's used to push the communist agenda. WJR, Mark, which topic? What's your opinion? Go ahead, please. Okay, um, on the GMOs, uh, I'm actually qualified to talk about it. I have a crop and soil science degree from Michigan State uh, from many years ago, but... Uh, Anyway, the golden rice that Monsanto had, the story that goes along with that is when that was developed way back in the, in the late 90s when GMOs were just in their early um, genesis, it was really a product that was developed as an offshoot of other research they were doing just because they, you know, these companies, they research other plants to figure out the technology and how to do what they do. And yellow rice... Because my, but, but do you agree or disagree with me? Are GMOs safe or unsafe? They're completely safe. All right, so you agree with me that genetically modified organisms are not the Frankensteins that the, uh, that the hysterical people are making them into? No, there has nothing to do with it. Yellow rice, Monsanto's mistake was 
is that because they had no market for rice, they were not in the rice industry, they gave those traits to companies in Southeast Asia for them to do exactly what you're saying, to help help the children uh, have a, a better vitamin A diet so they wouldn't uh, endure uh, inf- infantile blindness. And the reason... Right, it's, it's, actually, it's actually a Nobel Prize winning modified rice and yet you have organizations blocking its production and you know what they did in the philippines do you know that they actually invaded a test farm in the philippines and uh destroyed a golden rice field trial in the philippines well monsanto gave that to them because they thought that would create goodwill to show how good a company they were right And and a group of leftist fanatical social justice organizations along with local farmers ripped the plants out of the ground and these these groups were european church and government sponsored social justice groups along the lines of those attacking israel and pushing the big lie the big lie of global warming join the savage nation call now 855-400-SAVAGE 855-400-7282 savage All right, welcome back. Uh, Look, I have worked in the area of uh, nutrition and health and natural products most of my adult life. I've written books on the subject. I try to avoid chemicals where I can. But in the broader picture, when you have massive starvation on the planet, which we have, and you've got a half a million children a year going blind because of a lack of vitamin A, you would logically say, let the golden rice, which has been developed it's a miracle grain enhanced with vitamin A by Monsanto. Let, let them produce it, for God's sake. So eliminate the blindness and then work on getting rid of the GMOs if it's such a bad thing. But we don't even know how, if they're bad. Now, what is a GMO? Well, do you like apples that don't brown when you slice them? Do you like potatoes that don't get bruises from farm to table? Well, the FDA has approved genetically modified versions of these foods that can do that. People who are on the GMO side, they, they logically say they help farmers grow better crops faster, more cheaper food for the world. And people on the other side, most of whom are calling me, worry about their safety. They're not sure they're unsafe, but they say, do we know whether eating them over the long run can hurt, hurt people? So the um, spoiled rich white people go to uh, Whole Foods and they get what they think are better foods. They feel superior. And they eat what they think are cleaner foods and better foods. You ever take a look at the health of the people in there? They all look like they're dying from something. It looks like Lourdes Cathedral in the average Whole Foods. Everyone's convinced. None GMO, this. No. I never saw anything like it. It looks like Lourdes Cathedral, people walking around. So, you know, I mean, well, maybe they need it because they feel sickly. Okay, fine. Now, how do they create, create a GMO? Engineers, scientists take a plant, they change the plant by adding DNA from another plant, a bacteria or a virus, to it. Remember, DNA is what gives everything its special characteristics. So in this way, the original plant now has new qualities. And these new qualities can make them more resistant to disease, bugs, or drought. They can also affect their taste or shelf life. How is this different from the way crops have been improved for centuries? Well, as I said to you, The biggest difference is that genetic modification speeds up the process. And where it might have taken years to raise several generations of plants in fields to get the traits that are desired, in laboratories, scientists can grow several generations in one year. They don't have to wait for the seasons to change the plant. So does that mean we're creating Frankensteins? I doubt it. I doubt it. I think a lot of it is mass hysteria, incidentally. And I think you have to understand that there's a lot of money on the side of uh, the opposition to GMOs. In fact, there's a combined global war chest estimated to exceed $500 million a year to keep just one product off the market, and that's golden rice from Monsanto. Do you hear me? So don't believe everything that Greenpeace, a certifiably lunatic organization, tells you. Uh, I also don't like seeing whales harpooned. I have also saluted Greenpeace's actions to stop Uh, the killing of whales. I understand that. But on the other hand, they've gone overboard with GMOs, in my opinion. 
And the best evidence I have that GMOs are safe is that Patrick Moore, one of the original founders of Greenpeace in the 1970s, he's a grandfather in this business, left Greenpeace and is now working to expose Greenpeace's actions in the developing world. He's actually joined with Golden Rice inventor Ingo Potricus in calling for putting Greenpeace on trial for crimes against humanity. Did you hear this? Do you understand what's at stake here? We need leadership in this humanitarian uh, issue of starvation and blindness. And we need to start with golden rice. That's what we need to start with. So if you want to keep going to Whole Foods and buy your stuff and think you're better, go ahead and do it. I look for organic produce. Ask the people who shop for me. I don't like to eat grapes that are sprayed with pesticides. So I look for organic on my grapes because I eat grapes every day. I eat uh, uh, organically grown uh, fruits if I can get them. And in my mind, I'm doing myself a service. Do I want organophosphorus uh, residue? No. No, I don't want organophosphorus chemical residues in my system if I can avoid it. But what's the guarantee that I'm not going to get cancer anyway? Do you know that there's a guarantee? I don't know of any su such guarantee, by the way. Uh, how many people have you know, have you know, do you know or have known who have done the right thing and still gotten sick? Like everybody? That doesn't mean we shouldn't try to uh, maintain our health. I mean, I don't smoke. I don't take in pesticides. I bicycle twice a day in a rather easy format. It's flat, and I don't bicycle for more than 12 or 15 minutes. I do it more for the chi of it than I do for the cardio. I think this whole idea of cardio exercise is wrong to begin with. I think it's very, un I think it's very wrong. You want to get into my philosophy of, of health? If you want it for whatever it's worth, you may have your own. Believe who you want. I think pushing your heart is a sure way to give yourself a blowout. I see guys in their 50s running, and I sit there and say, I hope to God they don't die on the roadside. I hope they don't blow their hearts out because the body was not made to put, be pushed that hard at that age. I see it all the time, and they're gagging. Okay, so they look good, and then they drop dead. What can you do? Uh, you know, I have a friend now who well, I don't want to mention what happened to him because, it'll, you know, I have too many friends who have gotten cancer, even though they seem rather healthy. You know, what are you going to do? None of them were as fanatical about taking uh, vitamin C and vitamin E as I have been for the last 40 years. And I, I, I'm saturated with ascorbate. I'm saturated with, with vitamin E and other tocopherols and many other, uh, you know, vitamins. You could say vitamins are harmful. I've seen the, the Mayo Clinic try to prove vitamins are harmful, which is total rubbish, by the way. All their studies are flawed. All their studies are paid for by drug companies, in my estimation. And all of these studies put out by the Mayo Clinic and other universities now to debunk vitamins are simply pushed by the commercial interests who want you to go to medic, medis, medicines and not, and not vitamins. So there's a lot of confusion out there in all these different fields, including GMOs. And here I am, a vitamin-taking guy who eats organic food, who's worked in the health food industry his whole life, really, who drinks diet soda, who drinks energy drinks, who drinks vodka, who, I don't drink much wine in allergy season. In fact, I'm not going to have much more vodka, too. I'm sick of it. I don't even want to drink alcohol anymore. But that's a separate story. I just don't want it. I don't need it. But the thing is, you know, you have to come to some conclusion with these GMOs and stop freaking out over them. I think GMO foods will save the world of starvation and the children are, are, are blind. And the other topic you're not really calling about, this fake black woman. WMAL, Ken, on the fake black woman who resigned today from the Spokane NAACP. What do you got to say? Hey, Mike. Uh, I appreciate you taking my call. Um, I think that uh, the liberals are setting themselves up for a great failure, since uh, whether you're an evolutionist or a creationist, we all think that we came from Africa. And so, by definition, we're all African Americans, and that's her claim. So now, you know, every white college student can now mark on their application they're African American. And, and they have undermined their own position. They've undermined their own niche and it's a shame but it's yeah, yeah, this whole this whole new idea that we're all descended from lucy in africa is rather recent uh a number of years ago we all had originated i thought in the middle east somewhere in the fertile crescent and then i woke up to find out that uh, we all really originated in africa i what is that kind of like the science du jour yeah i, I don't know i'm not i'm not i'm certainly not uh, uh qualified to speak on either account but um, I'm just stating that... The I fact of the matter is that man has common ancestry, period, 
All races have common ancestry, incidentally. I think that's the point to remember in all of this. Yes. As, diff as different as many of us may appear, we have common ancestry. And that's the important thing to know. We are members of the same species. I remember learning that in, in college. It's the basic learning, which is that a species, by definition, means that any member of that species can interbreed with another member of the species and produce a viable offspring, as simple as that. So the Chihuahua can breed with the, with the uh, Irish wolfhound, theoretically, and produce a viable species called, you know, the canine, the dog, right? And, and, and any man can interbreed inter, uh, with another human, uh, theoretically, if they're both healthy and capable of breeding, and produce a viable offspring. That means we're members of the same species. We are not separate species in that regard. Although with Obama's pushing on racial division here, you would think he thinks that we're all different species. There's a Hispanic species, a African species, a white species, an Asian species, and he likes to divide and conquer. But really, we're all members of Homo sapiens. I don't think he learned that in in Colombia under Alinsky, Professor Alinsky. Yeah, I think I think he missed that uh, class. Yeah, he must have missed that class while he was out on a dope break. Hey, so look, look. The bottom line is is that this Rachel Dolezal has exposed a, a a real a real problem in this society. She faked being black her whole life. She changed her appearance to look black. She I don't know how she became the head of the uh, chapter other than pushing the uh, communist rhetoric harder and faster than anyone else in that office. I mean, when I read her resignation letter, I said classic communism, empowering marginalized voices, police brutality biased curriculum in schools, health inequities, lack of pro-justice political representation. This is right out of the communist playbook. And that's how she got to be the head of the NAACP in, in Spokane. It's more about that than it is about the NAACP in general. It's more, rather than, it's more about what the NAACP is pushing rather than Rachel Donizel. What is their message? What is their mod modus operandi? Where do they want this society to go? Are they using race as a weapon to push the communist rhetoric, the communist platform? That's the real question, isn't it? It is, yeah. So, All right, I I'm sending you a Father's Day gift, Countdown to Mecca. We're only, uh, today is the 15th of June, the 23rd is Father's Day. Oh, it's very close. It's a week from what, Sunday? I don't even know when it is. I think it's a week from Sunday. I suppose I'll get together with the family on that day. I've reached the point where I actually like Father's Day. I like the boring meal in a boring restaurant with the, <laughs> with the family. Stay in the line. We'll send you Countdown to Mecca because it's the last thing but boring. I guarantee you won't be able to put it down. Okay, back to the GMOs. We're going to do the two topics, GMOs and uh, fake civil rights activists, I guess we could say that. You know, I wish I could. Maybe I could be made into. Could someone GMO me, genetically modify me? I'd like to be seven inches taller. I'd like to be 30 pounds lighter. I would like to be more muscular. I would like to have a longevity, being, uh, uh, a longevity gene inserted into me, which will guarantee me a life, a healthy life until I'm 110, at which point I can then opt for more life or, or, or end it right then and there. Wouldn't I like to be GMO'd? Wouldn't you like to be GMO'd? If you had the option of having your DNA modified right now, would you do it so you could live longer and healthier? Yes or no? I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. If this doesn't touch you, you're untouchable. It doesn't matter what... what see, this is the... Okay, shut up. This is the thing about a universal song. It doesn't matter what race you are or what religion you are or what language you speak. If a song touches you and it's a foreign language, that song has soul. You get it? We've had many songs in foreign languages that have made it to the top of the charts in America, right? Not recently, by the way. Not recently, but it was in my day. Yet even some Spanish songs came along that went right to the top because they touched you. And I'm trying to touch you with the truth. Now, maybe the truth is a little hard to bear. I get it. One of the reasons I'm not as prominent in the media as I should be, having, uh, having been in the media for so, so many years, is that, you know, the truth is often not saleable. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I mean, you, do, you know what I'm saying. You know, you can phony it up and you can, uh, you can move yourself pretty far along if you espouse the Republican Party line and you lead people to believe 
that they're good and the Democrats are bad. You know, you can move pretty far if you're a paid uh, uh, mouthpiece for the RNC. Some of the radio business have made quite a fortune at that right from the beginning of their careers. All they do is tell you, tell you every day, Republicans good, Democrats bad. Republicans good, Democrats bad. Republicans great, Democrats bad. And, you know, I don't go along with that. I've been an independent for a long time, and I guess many of you are disappointed in my stance on GMOs right now, but I can't help it. This is my opinion. And if I, I, if I can get you to at least read some of the real scientific literature on it, you might not be as panicked by those who are selling you fear. They're selling you fear, and then they're selling you products to go along with the fear. I don't think you understand that as well. A lot of you are getting information from people that, oh, GMOs are evil, buy my products, they're non-GMO. This is bad, now buy my product, it's good. The same as Republican Democrat. Up to 80% of processed foods in the U.S. happen to be genetically modified. Okay, so there you go. Like it or not, genetically modified foods are ubiquitous right now and you're probably ingesting them whether you know it or not so like this oh god you ate a gmo i love all the hipsters out there you know they're vegetarian or lacto this stat vegan this and they don't smoke they don't drink they don't this they don't that they sleep with 16 people a week but they're pure as the driven snow and then they wonder why they're sick how come sexuality doesn't go along with the 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 uh, the the purity of these health food movements why is that omitted? I don't understand it. Why is it that so many people who are vegan and this and clean as a driven, but they'll sleep with 16 people a week? Why is that? They didn't understand that sexual mixing like that is very dangerous for the body, that it can't take the overwhelming input of other people's bodily fluids. They haven't gotten that yet. They didn't arrive, they didn't arrive at that conclusion. No, I'm mixing morality with G GMOs. It's a very important story because one of the reasons we have such a hysterical situation in america today about foods and air and water is because of the moral meltdown people are moral degenerates uh or moral whores if you want to put it that way both male and female and they think that by make they can make up for it by 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 being a vegan for example it doesn't mean you you can't do both but most people i'm telling you how this could they got the yoga mat they're vegan and 16 people a week that's all not all i'm giving you an example and you know i'm right you know I'm right intuitively, and you know that a lot of people who are into the health movement are trying to clean up their act because they had a lifetime of dissipation. If I could only have $100 for every person I met who led uh, horrendously dirty lives, who are now as clean as the driven snow because they don't eat GMOs, they're vegan, they're like, oh, yeah, I'm a vegan. I go to yoga. They're going to yoga to look at someone in tight pants, most of them, the guys that I don't talk to anymore from the garment center. GMOs, fake black quits NAACP. More to come right here on the Savage Nation. Be sure to catch Countdown to Mecca for Father's Day. It's the best gift in the world. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. New Monday. It is the Savage Nation. We've been talking about genetically modified foods and uh, modified people, such as Rachel Dolezal, who portrayed herself falsely as a black for many years now. And the embattled president of the Spokane chapter of the NAACP, where else but Spokane, said today she's stepping down from a post. Rachel Dolezal uh, has parents who said she was born as a Caucasian child, but she identified as a black, and somehow she, I don't know how she got the job. She changed her appearance. Uh, she's an assistant professor of Africana studies, don't you know? And she said it's with complete allegiance to the cause of racial and social justice and the NAACP that I step aside from the presidency and pass the baton to my vice president, Naima Quarles Burnley. 
And then she went on, and she's a part-time professor in the Africana Studies Program at Eastern Washington University, uh, real high on the, on the totem pole there. Uh, but she came on the fire after her parents revealed last week that she was pretending uh, to be a black woman. On Monday, her parents accused their daughter of telling lies and attempting to, quote, destroy her biological family. Her mom, Ruth Ann Dolezal, told ABC's Good Morning America she was obviously misrepresenting herself. We did not pursue exposing her. It was only after the press came to us that we were willing to answer their questions. So, I, I mean, this raises the bigger question. A few weeks ago, we had a man pretending to be a woman, and the media said, well, if he feels like a woman, he's a woman trapped in a man's body. They, there's no such thing as a man and a woman. He's a, he's a trans cisgender. Cis transgender. Cis, cis whatever he is. He, he's whatever he wants to be. There is no truth anymore. Obama pretends to be president. He is president. That's all. Al Sharpton pretends to be a civil rights activist. Well, he is a civil rights activist. Are you crazy? This doesn't bother you? Now, it raises the larger question of, isn't it time for the NAACP to reevaluate re its mission, to move on? We, after all, have a black president, a black attorney general, hundreds if not thousands of black folks in the government running the operation. The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, in an age when we have a black president and a black attorney general and so many folks of African heritage in government, I think that the NAACP has completed its job. They've done their job. And I think that this is a time, the time for them to consider moving on to something else. And moreover, if you look at her resignation letter, you see it, it's communism through and through. The rhetoric is ra racial and social justice, police brutality, bias curriculum in school, health inequities. You know, the, the usual rubbish you've heard from the left. And she says, while challenging the construct of race, what? She's challenging the construct of race. So she's denying this th a thing is race altogether. Well, then it goes to my argument that the NAACP should dissolve itself. In other words, if there is no race, according to Rachel Donazel, then why do we need a national association for the advancement of a specific race? We should dissolve uh, La Raza. You know, La Raza, the brown supremacist movement that's dictating uh, uh, immigration policy in America. If there's no race, then dissolve these groups. WJR in Detroit, Bev, you're on the Savage Nation. Dr. Savage, happy to call in. I think that you might be a little quick in judging that lady because you just made the comment, if a woman feels like she's trapped in a man's body, why can't you accept the fact that the fact that this lady has dedicated her life to black this, black that, that in fact she is not convinced that she is a black woman trapped in a white body? I mean, it sounds... I, I understand you're pulling my leg, but she was born as a Caucasian woman. That's the point. And she faked being black. She said she was born as a black lady. But, okay, her parents narked on her because of the fact they were embarrassed. Isn't the same difference if you find out your kid is... Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean her parents narked on her? What, what kind of statement is that? What kind of illiterate statement is that? Her parents narked on her. The parents were fed up with her lies. If she identified as a black person and wanted to volunteer or work for the NAACP, fine. But she didn't do that. She said she was born African of African heritage. Doesn't that offend you? Uh, actually not. I have a friend that is into genealogy, and according to her, every one of us has a black woman trapped. Uh, here we go again, right? We're all related to Lucy. I get it. That's irrelevant. Okay, but if your argument is true, then why do we need the NAACP? If we're all one race, then why do we need one advancing one race only? Why don't they dissolve the NAACP? Nash National Association of Advancement of Colored People? I think that's offensive if we're all one race. So do I. So do I. You know what I think would be... Oh, so you agree that the NAACP should dissolve itself? No, no. Listen. I think well, that's what you just said. You agreed. With, you just agreed with me. You just knocked yourself. I'd rather she stay in the position. To no, no, wait a minute. You just knocked yourself. You agreed with me that if there is no race, there's no need for an organization that is single-mindedly pushing only one race. Isn't that what you just said? I totally agree with you on that. All right, so you knocked yourself then. You just knocked yourself. Thanks for the call. I appreciate it. 855-407-282 is the phone number. Now let's go back to something more important that maybe we can apply some common sense to, which is GMOs, okay? GMOs. All the white people in the suburbs drive around with Stop Monsanto bumper stickers, ignoramuses, fools. They know nothing. College-educated dolts. Dolts. Total dolts. Monsanto is their enemy, not ISIS. Not ISIS, it's Monsanto now, the worst enemy on the planet. KBOI. 
Where is KBOI? It's one of the big signals. I forgot. I'm blanking today. Rick, uh, Boise, of course. Rick from Boise, what's on your mind? Good afternoon, Uncle Mike, my life coach. Uh, <laughs> I could use a life coach right now. What's on your mind? Well, um, I, too, am an educated man, Uncle Mike. Uh, <laughs> a graduate of Hard Knock U, and as a trucker of 37 years seniority, you could call me a road scholar. But <laughs> <laughs> so I get that. You are a road scholar in my book. What's on your mind, road scholar? Okay, I'm a tanker yanker, and I'm currently in Monsanto's fleet. And, you know, Uncle Mike, when we're talking Monsanto and we're talking glyphosate, we're talking Roundup, okay? And Roundup, from the transportation, the DOT's perspective, it's one of the safest products out here. The EPA and the DOT are so concerned about glyphosate that they don't even categorize it as a hazardous material. So... Do you, do, you trans, do you transport this in a tanker truck? Yes, I do. And, and how, how many years have you been doing it? Uh, specifically Roundup, I've been doing it eight years now. Any, any signs of uh, cancer? No, nor have I grown a tail, nor have I grown a... <laughs> You're not showing signs of gills emerging? <laughs> no, not yet. No, because you could have a, a reverse evolutionary process occur as a result of what you're toting around in that truck. You may start to look like an amphibian soon. Well, compared to the pointy-headed intellectuals that are always assaulting at Monsanto... I'll you know, if you, if you do start de-evolving and become somewhat reptilian, I would suggest that you apply for um, appear, an appearance on the uh, uh, Nat Geo show, Naked and Afraid. You'd probably do better than most of them in the jungle. Well, I'll take that under advisement. Have you ever watched that show, by the way, Naked and Afraid? Uh, only from flipping from one channel to the other. I wa I'm obsessed with it. It's not to see the naked woman's body, I swear to God. It's like I don't know why anyone would do that to themselves. Why would they go out into the jungle with a stranger of another sex and try to prove that they can survive for 20 or 21 days without anything? I don't understand why they would subject themselves. And of course they're going to get sick and almost die. Well, I don't know. Maybe there's a lot. Maybe they get a lot of money for it. And they don't even go with sandals. they got to walk in a jungle without sandals, for God's sakes. I guess they're tender feet. Yeah, they are tender feet, for sure. But uh, some of these people are so strong. Last night I saw one with a vegan woman and a former Marine who's as tough as nails. He broke down and she saved him. She wouldn't eat anything but fruits and vegetables. He scoffed at her. He killed a... Uh, I don't know what he killed. She got him a frog to keep him alive, and then she... She cried that she had to catch the frog to save him, but she wouldn't eat the frog. She wound up carrying him out of the jungle, basically. And this guy was as tough as nails, which taught me a lesson, by the way. You know, don't underestimate a vegan woman, man, or do so at your own risk. Well, they are meaner than most. No, she was a sweet woman. She was a survivalist and really nice. She had like a feminine voice, and she was a sweet woman. And this Marine, without her, he would have died. And here was a woman who, I don't know how she survived 20 days without any protein, she was eating fruits and vegetables. There's very little protein in that. But I'm saying, look, if you start to de-evolve and you find gills growing, I suggest you contact Discovery Channel and see if you can go on to Naked and Afraid. Thank you. And, and, and by the way, I have a gift for you in your truck. Can you read while driving? Countdown to Mecca. You can read it at truck stops. I used to read through the desert, Uncle Mike. I'd like to well, you got my novels coming on the way. Uh, now, I, I want to ask a question since we're talking about amphibians. Are there still such thing as rest stop lizards? <laughs> Uncle Mike, that's, a, that's an unfounded stereotype. <laughs> yeah. I know this is a family show, and I shouldn't have asked that question, but I thought since I've had such a long, hard day, I've had a day from H-E-L-L, -L, you can't believe it, four hours on the floor with my equipment not working, engineers running in and out of Dallas. The show almost didn't work until a minute before showtime. God bless America. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Uh, now let's talk about GMOs for those of you who are potheads. 
Uh, are you aware that the new marijuana out there have much higher levels of THC? Now, I realize that modifying marijuana to give you that bigger high, the bigger blast from the more powerful dope than your grandfather smoked did not involve the tools of modern de- technology necessarily, but some may have, by the way. Do you, have, do, you, do you know for sure that some of these higher THC marijuana uh, strains were not uh, modified biotechnologically? Biotechno- How do you know that? How do you know that? And I guarantee you that even if you learn uh, that uh, some pot is GMO modified, you'd smoke it anyway. You'd say, ah, I just want to get high. It's great stuff. So why don't you apply the same thing to, to, to golden rice? Because you, you haven't thought it through, that's all. So, look, there are old methods and new methods in anything. And the fact of the matter is, the old methods were either by nature or man. The sweet corn varieties that we enjoy today include a natural mutation which allows them to retain their sugar content after picking. And in the 50s and 60s, many plant breeders used mutation breeding to increase the chances of finding DNA changes that would result in new trials, new traits, as I told you earlier. And what they did was they exposed the plants or seeds to doses of chemicals or radiation that actually would cause random mutations and then look for the rare cases where there was some desirable effect. Did you know that? They also used the toxic chemical colchicine to induce the plants to double their number of chromosomes, something that sometimes leads to more vigorous growth. And these methods were successfully employed by the extra-legal marijuana industry over the last few decades. So don't tell me that you're not using a genetically modified marijuana. You are. Mutation breeding, chromosome doubling, which led to genetic changes, uh, was a form of GMO. They say, well, it wasn't really done in a laboratory. Yes, it was. This is just a more advanced method of doing it, biotechnology. And all you do is afraid of it because you don't understand it. Really, you have to understand that you're probably smoking GMO marijuana. You don't even know it because that's how it was done. I told you that's how farmers did it. I remember when I was a graduate student at the University of Hawaii working in ethnobotany. In an associate, associated lab, there were young people working on papaya seeds. I was not interested in crops or anything like that or in ornamental plants. I was always more practical in my mind, uh, let's say more esoterically practical in my own mind. I was interested in medicinal plant technology and, and deriving medicines from jungle plants to make it simple. But I'd watch these people working in horticulture and they would sit with hundreds and hundreds of different papaya seeds. And I didn't know what they were looking for. They were looking for papaya that had fewer seeds. Because papaya is a very difficult fruit to eat. I ate one the other. I happen to love papaya, right? I don't like the mess of a papaya. Well, most people don't like it. You got to get cut it. You got to stick a fork in it and gently tease out the uh, the seeds that that nature put in there. That's the way the seed, you know, the, the plant propagates, obviously. And it's a mess. It's not as clean as some other fruit. So the papaya manufacturer uh, growers in Hawaii have spent millions and millions of dollars trying to find seeds for future papaya plants with less seeds in the fruit. That's a form of natural modification of plants. Now, admittedly, it's not a GMO papaya, but it's along the same lines because if they use colchicine to increase uh, the uh, DNA changes, then they were doing the same thing. If they expose the, the seeds or the plants to chemicals or radiation to cause random mutations and then look for the rare instances where there was some desirable effect, such as a lower seeded papaya, well, what can I say to you? You know, that's the way it is. So we're living in an artificially induced world to begin with. Everything we touch is artificial, which is, don't get me wrong now, I'm not arguing, therefore go and have a, a double cheeseburger and a smoke a cigarette. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I myself watch very carefully what I put into my body. I personally will not eat any barbecued foods. Maybe once a year if I'm in a, you know, in the South when the plane was forced to land in uh, Memphis, I went to a barbecue joint. Why don't I eat barbecued f- foods? Why don't, I, why don't I barbecue? Because in the 60s, when I was in university, I learned about benzoapyrenes. That's the black stuff on top of meat. Cancer-causing, carcinogenic, yeah, every time you grill, 
you are ingesting carcinogenic compounds. You say, ah, come on, it's crap. Oh, it's crap? Nonsense. Really fast insiders of carcinogenesis. I don't eat barbecued foods. I won't eat any of that kind of stuff. So the thing is, I'm very careful with what I take. So don't think I'm suddenly leaping into the, onto the side of people saying, eat anything, do whatever you want. That's nonsense. It's rubbish. I'm trying to apply common scientific knowledge to this very complicated issue of GMOs and maybe alleviate some of the, the, the anxiety people are having in this area. And I want to leave you with the idea that <clears throat> the miracle rice that I told you about that has been developed by Monsanto could save 500,000 children a year from losing their sight owing to a lack of vitamin A. Don't you understand what's at stake here? And that the former founder of Greenpeace, Patrick Moore, jumped ship from Greenpeace and is now working to expose the dangers of Greenpeace and what they're doing. Yeah, they're actually helping starve the world's poor with their environmentalism. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. I talked about the fake black quitting as head of the NAACP in Spokane. And that's a huge story. And you've got to read her resignation letter to see what a devout revolutionary she really is and how she really was using race as a weapon against the middle class, as does, as do most civil rights organizations. They use their race as a weapon against innocent people, in my estimation. The big story for most of you, though, is the uh, uh, the issue of GMOs. Many of you are freak, freaked out over GMOs. You don't even know what they are. You have no background whatsoever in science, and yet you're panicked into thinking that GMOs are unsafe. What you don't know is that the supporters and partners who are involved in the $500 million a year PR campaign against GMOs reads like a directory of European church and government-sponsored social justice and development groups. The very same groups who are promoting the global warming lie are promoting the lie about GMOs. And I will prove it to you. Patrick Moore, one of the founders of Greenpeace in the 1970s, a bona fide true environmentalist, quit Greenpeace and now works to expose Greenpeace's actions in the developing world. And he has joined with Golden Rice inventor Ingo Potricus in calling for putting Greenpeace on trial for crimes against humanity. Did you hear me? There are other humanitarian and environmental groups that have come to recognize the important role biotech can play in alleviating human suffering and spurring development. Two of them are Oxfam and Nature Conservancy. They were initially opposed to GMOs, but in the light of overwhelming scientific confirmation of safety and efficacy, both Oxfam and Nature Conservancy have softened or ended their opposition to GMOs. Isn't it time that you open your mind to the realities that GMOs are not only not unsafe, they would be of benefit to so many millions of children who are dying of blindness? Where are you getting this information from that GMOs are unsafe? Many of you live in a panic about everything you put in your mouth. Let me explain something to you. GMOs can save millions of lives. It's the environmentalists who are doing real harm to the world. And the best example of this is golden rice. Does anyone out there know what golden rice is? It's a GMO-created rice. It's enhanced with vitamin A producing beta carotene. I happen to know that one of the biggest problems in the third world was blindness in children. And do you know why they were going blind? Because it was from vitamin A deficiency. Even to this day, a half a million people, mainly children, will die from vitamin A deficiency. And a half a million people, mostly children, 500,000 people, mostly children, will lose their sight. And about 6,000 of them will die from vitamin A deficiency. And that is why companies spent a fortune hybridizing rice, in this case, in order to make certain that the rice was rich in vitamin A, in this case, bite carotene. It was to stop the blindness. It was to cure blindness. And so these idiots, these morons, are singing about GMOs. I see idiots in Marin County, California driving around with stop Monsanto, lily white morons who are afraid of everything in the world. They're afraid of black people, brown people. They're afraid of Asian people. They're afraid of uh, UFOs. 
They're afraid of uh, fluoride. They're afla- afraid of uh, wa- brain wa- waves in the air. They're afraid of pesticides. They're afraid of GMOs. Little chickens running around. Afraid of the whole world. Let me explain to you how corn was developed. Do you know how corn was developed? Well, it was developed by the evil Native Americans and Central Americans over a long period of time. Corn was originally a grass, a grass with a very small group of uh, flowers on the top, or seeds, rather. And they started to hybridize it by picking the grasses with the larger seeds and cross-pollinating them or cross-matching them with other grasses with large seeds. Over and over and over and through millennia, they became corn. Do you understand that? Corn didn't just happen by itself. It, would, it was hybridized by Indian farmers until it became corn. Should we now have a bumper sticker that says, what, disinter them from their graves and try them in the, in the United Nations for making corn? Do you understand that the cherry that you eat, do you understand that the pear that you eat, do you understand that the wheat that you eat, do you understand that virtually everything that you eat has been genetically modified, if not by nature, then by man, and it is not toxic. This is a scare tactic of the radical left who are afraid of everything. Everything scares them. And was it not for this uh, wheat, the golden rice, the miracle grain, enhanced with vitamin A, a half a million more children a year would die from blindness because of vitamin A deficiency. And many of those lives could be saved if golden rice were in their diets. But the ongoing hatred of anti-GMO hippie activist groups and their lavish scare campaign with a global war chest estimated to exceed $500 million a year have kept golden rice off the global market. Do you understand that this is the same scare tactic that's being used with the fake global warming data? Do you understand how dangerous the left is to the survival of the human race? I don't think I've changed any minds here, but I'm trying to open up a dialogue. There's a lot of hysteria out there. And it, it's all stemming from the hysteria about GMOs. And I saw an article over the weekend in the New York Post entitled How Neil Young and Greenpeace Work to Starve the World's Poor by Owen Patterson. And Owen Patterson is a member of the British Parliament. And he believes that Neil Young is doing more harm to the poor than Monsanto. And he's writing a song about fascism and chemical giants walking arm in arm. I mean, the aging hippie songwriter is following the lead of activists who claim that GMOs are harmful to health, farmers, and the environment. I totally agree with the writer. It's tragically wrong. And I believe that in reality, GMOs can save millions of lives. And it's the environmental wackos who are doing real harm to the world, which is not to say that I don't seek out organic fruits and vegetables where possible, but I'm not a poor man. I can afford them. Which is not to say that I wouldn't prefer to eat uh, range-fed beef, the little beef that I eat, although now lately as I get older, I I don't know, I can't even look at a cow anymore without feeling sad for the cow, to be frank. I'm reaching a point where all life seems to be rather sacred to me. And so, therefore, that's not it's not a, a cosmic statement that I'm making. It's a very personal statement. But the fact of the matter is the world's population, the world population is not at the point where we can afford to feed everybody with organic uh, uh, produce or organic, uh, organically raised meat. It's something that you'd get in Whole Foods for the very touchy-feely uh, white people who have nothing but money to spend on their perfect little selves, positive that if they eat organically, they're going to think organically. And if they think organically, the world will be a better place. All racism, sexism, and homophobia will go away if only they think correctly. Okay, that's very nice, but it's naive. There are many other topics. And Bernie Sanders is out there on the hustings telling everyone how bad America is, pushing for socialism, and what he really wants to do is uh, establish a radical United States government, single-payer health care system. He would abolish tuition fees for in-state higher education. Everyone should get a free college education. Sounds nice. I would have liked that. Who would pay for it? You would. He would drive big money out of U.S. politics. No kidding. Tell that to Hillary Clinton. He would redistribute income. What does that mean? Right now, there's a graduate income tax, which is as fascistic and unfair as, as they come. Why should a high earner pay a higher rate of tax than a low earner? Why shouldn't there be a flat tax? Well, have you thought about that? He would increase Social Security benefits. Now, who doesn't want that? If you're on Social Security, wouldn't you want to increase Social Security benefits so you can go to an Indian gambling casino and sit there with, with the chips in your hand, with your shaky diabetes arm, 
the upper arm shaking with the flab hanging down, with the cigarette in your mouth and the cup full of chips. He would break up the too big to fail Wall Street banks. As you know, Wall Street's always been a target of people. And he's making believe he's against Wall Street, when in fact, he knows and I know that you get nowhere without Wall Street. And frankly, let's look at Wall Street. It's all not, not that all evil. I mean, they do fund businesses. Most of your new businesses were funded through Wall Street. So what are you talking about? Do they even know what they're talking about? Let me break it down for you. We'll go on to other topics. The next time you're sitting in New York City or San Francisco or Chicago or Washington, and um, someone brings up the idea of, you know, socialism's not a bad idea. We really, I really think it would work quite well here. Tink, tink, says the cocktail drinker. So ask them a question. Why is it that when Haitian refugee, refugees risk their lives trying to get to Florida in homemade boats, Florida, remember, from Haiti is almost 500 miles away. Why would they risk 500 miles in an open sea in a broken little homemade boat to get to the evil capitalist empire of America when they could have gone just 50 miles from Haiti to the workers' paradise of Fidel Castro in Cuba? I think that sort of ends the argument. Are the Haitians stupid? Or do they know that this evil capitalist empire called America is the greatest system that was ever created despite all of its flaws? The greatest place where the greatest good for the greatest number uh, happens to prevail. So again, use that analogy. Haitians, homemade boats, fleeing Haiti. Why did they not go 50 miles to the workers' paradise of Cuba on the Fidel Castro? Why did they risk their lives and go 500 miles to get to the evil America, the capitalist America. Try that on your college uh, student daughter when she comes home from Harvard. Now, there's another fatal defect of socialism, and that is the disregard that socialism has for the role of private property rights, uh, period. Private property rights don't exist in a socialist, in a pure socialist government. If everyone in America owned land together, everybody would act as if no one owned it. Take a look at Baltimore. They didn't even own that land. They burnt it to the ground the thugs that Obama couldn't get enough of. And when no one owns it, no one will, will take care of it. Look at the public housing in America. Look at public housing and how the people abuse it, how they treat it like a, like, what's the word I'm looking for, like, like a cesspool. Why do people in public housing treat their own housing like garbage? Because they don't own it. Why don't they own it? Because they don't have the money to own it. We the people say, all right, look, they can't live in the street, let's give them some public housing. Well, the least you would figure is they would take care of their housing, but they don't. Take a look at the sad state of public housing projects across America, and you will see exactly how socialism works. What about owning personal possessions? Do you know what happens under socialism? Did you know what happened in communist China when the communists took over China way back when? See, right now, China is not really a communist nation. China has more free capitalism right now than we do, combined with a fascist dictatorship running it which is where we're going right now. But as far as an economic system goes, the Chinese enjoy more freedoms than we do. There are less taxes, there are lower regulations, and there's more freedom to produce goods and distribute goods and sell goods in China without government interference than we have in this country right now. That's something for you to know. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I, Michael Savage, trust to buy my gold and silver from. SwissAmerica.com. You know, there's a word in Spanish called duende that I learned 40 years ago because I grew up listening to Spanish music. I know you've got me typecast, but I grew up on Cuban, Puerto Rican, uh, Panamanian music in New York. And the thing is, I learned Spanish in school for seven years. And I came, I read Spanish literature. I had to read all the Spanish literature. I never really adapted that well to it. I like French and French language better. But in the Spanish language, there is a word called duende, which is loosely translated as meaning soul. And some songs have that magic called soul. Some music has it. Some art has it. You know, some poetry has it. Some talk show hosts have it and some don't. You can't buy duende. You can't learn duende. And this song has duende, and when I heard it on the radio Friday night driving the restaurant, but this is an important st story for me, because it's a universal story about a, a single mother who is dying, and her hardworking son, you know, looks at her, and his heart's ripped out. Because when he was a boy, he thought life was easy and different, and he, he looked at his mother, you know, and he just can't believe how hard life is. It's such a beautiful song, and what I'm saying to you is, we can't 
let our desire to save America, and we can't let our desire to maintain borders, language, and culture poison us to all of the positive things that are brought in by some immigrants and some immigrant groups. We can't let that happen. We can't let the fanatical Muslims make us hate everyone else. I'll, I won't mince words. Let's make it real simple for you. Every time there's another arrest by the, by the FBI, it doesn't seem to be someone from Mexico, by the way, even though 30% of all criminals include many Mexicans. Don't say all Mexicans come here to rip the system off. It's just not true. And that's the poison that's going around. I'm trying to end the poison. I'm trying to make you understand you can have it. Yeah, you can have it both ways. Yes, you can have it both ways. If only you will use some, what shall I say, discernment? That's the word I'm looking for, discernment. And that's why I'm playing the song, because the song touched me all over again. I've never heard the song. This, the version I played for you is by La Tropa Velanata. I don't know. There's many versions of Los Caminos de la Vida, the road of life, the path of life, the paths of life, really. And it's about the paths of life and not what I used to hope. They're not what I used to believe. They're not what I used to imagine. They're hard to travel. They're hard to walk. And I can't find a way out. It's almost existential. It's amazing, the lyrics of it. But the last point of this is, the singer says, Yo pensaba que la vida era distinta, pardon my pronunciation. I used to think that life was different cuando era chiquiti when I was a little boy. To yo cria, I used to believe that things were easy. Like yesterday, that my married mother, you know. It's amazing, the song. And, and, and look, what the, look what the culture has brought here in so many positive ways. And you can't, again stereotype and categorize an entire culture or race in a negative way just because we're being flooded with so many haters from another culture and another religion. Period. End of story. Not all cultures are the same. Some bring things and some don't. Look at the Italian people. I mean, if you want to get focused on the Italian people, you say, oh, mafia. Well, that is so embarrassing to Italian people. What percentage of the Italian people were ever members of the mafia? A very tiny, tiny percentage. Tiny, tiny percentage. And look what the Italian culture has brought to society. Whether it be, forget the commonplace, common man says Italian food. What about opera, Italian opera? And the music of Italy and such. And that's why people were offended by the series The Sopranos, which, which implied that everyone was in the mafia. So you have to look at the positive of cultures. Virtually every part of our melting pot has brought something positive to the society until rather recently when Obama has chosen to flood Americans America with immigrants who have nothing to give us and everything to take. You get it? So don't fall for it. Don't let the left turn you against all immigrants because what they're trying to do is turn you into the image of a racist. Savage.